How to move beyond limitations with one simple word. Stay tuned. Damon here with NLP Gym. One simple phrase to overcome resistance. And that can be resistance within yourself or it can be resistance in other people. And before I get into this, if you haven't already, please click subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can get these videos on a regular basis. So, what is this magical phrase? Well, it's actually, it kind of comes down more to one single word, and a very simple word. And this comes from Milton Erickson, or the Milton model. Milton Erickson was a wizard at moving people beyond their limitations, mainly because he was so effective in moving himself beyond his own limitations, especially when it came to his physical health. So Grinder and Bandler modeled how he would do this, and one of the ways that he would do this uh, was through, well, mainly through language and hypnosis, and they created the Milton model, and this, so this comes directly from the Milton model. And the word, to boil it down to one word, is the word if. When you encounter resistance with someone or an objection, a lot of times they're going to use words like, I can't, I shouldn't, I couldn't, I, I must not, those type of words. And these words are called modal operators in the, Milton, uh, the meta model, different than the Milton model. The meta model was the first model in NLP and it was based in language. And when somebody uses a word, some of those words, what they're basically doing is defining their map of reality, their limitations in their map of reality. We don't experience reality directly. We, we create a map of reality through distortion, deletion, and generalizations. And we operate from this map. Now, the map is going to be limited, as all maps are, because the map is not the territory. Reality being the territory and the map being how we create our understanding of reality, which is always going to be more limited than reality itself. Like, a map is always more limited than the actual territory. However, a map is useful because we can just put it in our back pocket and take it out anytime we want and we can find our way through something really fast rather than having to sit in the territory and try to figure it out. So it's a quick uh, way to get through reality, make decisions, and your mind is all about taking shortcuts. Unfortunately, sometimes we create limitations for ourselves and the only way that we can get out of those limitations is by using our imagination. So the word if, when someone gives you, throws you a limitation, they throw you a modal operator, say in sales, you're having a sales appointment. In sales, I would highly recommend that you do this before somebody raises, raises an objection. When somebody raises an objection in sales, most of the time, you're going to have a, you're going to have a much harder time, let me put it this way, you're going to have a much harder time pulling the person out of the objection rather than heading the objection off before they fully form it in their mind. If you're a salesperson watching this, I, I know you know what it's like to be in a sales appointment and you just know that the person's not going to buy. You get that feeling that they're not interested. You just know it and you feel like you're, you're talking on and you're not, you're not really getting anywhere, but for the sake of being in the appointment, you feel like you have to finish it. What you can do at that point if you're starting to get the feeling that they're not going to buy, you can ask them, if you were to buy this now, I'm just curious, which option would suit you best? So there's a lot going on in that sentence. So let's unpack it a little bit. First, you want to do the, the if. If you were to buy. Now, because this is so gentle, you're not telling them you're going to buy this, and because you're going to buy this, I'm curious right now, which option you're going to take. If you said something like that, even if the person was intending to buy, they might not want to because now you're telling them what they have to do and, and most people don't like being told what to do. So you say, if you were to buy, and that if makes it so gentle. And in order for them to understand what you're even talking about, they have to imagine this. So if you were to buy this now, I'm just curious, the word now gets them to think about buying it now, or do, are, they, are you saying now you're curious? 
this is what we call an ambiguity also in the Milton model and the mind kind of goes off in two different directions and because it goes off in two different directions comprehending both of these of the messages it tends to open up your on your conscious and you have a direct um, communication with the unconscious so if you were to buy this now I'm just curious which option would suit you best so you're presupposing that there is an option that suits them best and in order for them to understand what you're asking them they have to imagine which option suits them best so now they start to bring they they bring on this idea are they trying it on that one of the options that you're presenting is actually a, the best option for them and they're starting to imagine having it so this might not overcome the objection but it will certainly get you closer to where you want to be and it will work sometimes um, in fact it will work a lot of times now say you're you're working with uh, an, an employee and and this happens with for me all the time your employee has some limitation like you they have you have the sales goal for them and they say you know what I can't I can't do that I can't hit that sales goal my response to that would be what if you could or what would it be like if if you did or imagine you've already achieved that sales goal and look back on that and and notice what is it you had to do in order to achieve that so there's a lot going on in these phrases um, that have to do with the Milton model, but I really want to stress the if. If you could, if it were that way, if you did, what would that be like? So what you're doing is you're, you're asking them to employ their imagination to imagine outside of the boundaries they've created in their map of reality. And this is so powerful because it's your imagination that's going to take you beyond your limitations. It's your imagination that's going to take you beyond what's logical or what most people think is possible. One more example, if you're coaching someone, you know, the first thing you want to find out when you're coaching someone is what do they want? And you want to find out well, what's getting in their way and what, what are they experiencing right now? And I'll make suggestions about what they should do based on what they want. And a lot of times they'll say, well, no, I, I couldn't do that. My response is, what if you did? What would that be like if you did do that? So again, you have, you're asking them to imagine outside of their map, outside of their boundaries. Now, I've had people do that where I would say, well, you know, what if you did? And they, would, they would just return, you know, with the same thing. Well, no, I couldn't do that. And then I'll just say, well, no, I understand you can't do that. So I'm pacing. I understand you can't do that. I just want you to think about if you did, what would that be like? As soon as they start putting their mind there, it starts to seem a lot more possible. And you can do this with yourself. What is it that you want to do that you think, no, okay, I can't do that, or I wouldn't do that, or I didn't, uh, I want to do that, but I can't. What if you did? And start to imagine. Uh, the reason why this works is because you're using the imagination. Uh, we can get very logical, and uh, we can actually hold ourselves back by being too logical. When you use the imagination, you get beyond logic. And if you think about some of the people who have done extraordinary things, the only way they got there was through their imagination. Because it probably, if it wasn't possible before, like say the four minute mile, you've got to imagine what that's got to be like outside of what has actually happened. Because nobody prior to the first person doing it had ever done it. So you have no reference experience for that. But you do have an imagination. Um, Einstein said that you can't resolve, you can't solve a problem at the same level in which the problem is being created. So when you have a map of reality that is creating a certain problem for you, you're not going to find a solution within the same map. You have to expand that map. And how you do that is by imagining possibilities that are not currently within your map. So you've got to get out of your head, you've got to get out of your map, you've got to get out of your limitations. And that's what they mean by thinking outside of the box. You've created a box for yourself that you call reality. The only way you're going to get out of that is by adding more choices to your map and adding more possibilities to your map and making sure that your map is a useful map and that it's also grounded in reality. So you need to, it needs to be somewhat accurate. You can't the other thing that Einstein also said is that he would take his imagination over his skills, over his intellect, 
over any of those things because his, it was his imagination that was able to set him apart as a genius. Logic, skills, intellect, all those things are going to get you so far and they're very, very important. If you want to go to the next level though, it takes imagination. Even athletes use their imagination when it comes to lifting weights that, you know, they're, they're not, they're as beyond what they thought is possible. Even long distance marathon runners, they start to, I've heard that they actually imagine that there's like colors and rainbows and they're, they're running through clouds or really it almost sounds like hallucinations, but this is how they get themselves to get to that next level. So using what if, if, what if you did, if, if you could, what if you could, if it were that way, the word if, very, very powerful, also quite underused in NLP. So start using it, use it on yourself and use it on other people. Speaking of overcoming resistance and obstacles and problems, we have Core Transformation coming up September 16th, 17th, and 18th, and that is taught by Mark Andreas. He is the son of the woman who created Core Transformation, which is uh, Connie Ray Andreas, is his mother. If you haven't already, please check out nlp-gym.com, and we have all of our trainings coming up and also our online trainings on that website and follow us on Facebook and as I mentioned if you haven't already please subscribe to this YouTube channel and if you like this video click like right down here and please leave a comment or ask a question